These are the top five cloud careers ranked by salary. And some of these might surprise you. As someone who's worked with cloud for years and mentored others to break into the industry, I filtered all of the roles down to five. These five are all in high demand, are available across the world and do not require a university degree. So the first and the highest paid out of the whole list is the cloud solutions architect. So I have this friend who's a cloud solutions architect and the way he describes his job is pretty interesting. He says his core responsibility is to be the visionary for the systems he works on. And I think it's kind of like being the conductor of an orchestra. You know, the person who stands up front and makes sure all of the different instruments are playing their parts correctly. As a cloud solutions architect, you're doing something similar, but with technology. You have to understand how all of the different pieces, the databases, the servers, the applications all fit together. And not just from a technical standpoint, but from a business perspective too. Because the most important thing is that the systems you're designing have to actually meet the business needs of the company. Now, let's look at a potential day-to-day -day of a solutions architect. So in the morning, they'll open their laptop and they'll check their emails and respond to any urgent matters that have come up. They'll also attend their team stand-up meeting to discuss any ongoing projects and daily goals and to update the team on what they're doing. And then they'll go to a client meeting to discuss the requirements for a new cloud solution. After that meeting, they'll begin drafting the architecture diagram for the new project. In the early afternoon, they'll take their lunch break. And after that, they'll review an existing cloud application's architecture to improve the performance of it. Then they'll have a meeting with stakeholders to provide updates on any ongoing projects that they have. In the late afternoon, they'll have a deep work session where they'll be designing and documenting a new cloud solution focusing on security. They'll then start to work on a cost optimization plan for a client's cloud usage. And then another client call to discuss progress and gather feedback on any proposed solutions. And at the end of their day, they'll wrap up any documentation and respond to any emails that have come up. So what skills do you need? Now, obviously you can't be an architect without having deep technical knowledge. You need to understand the fundamental IT concepts like networking and security. You also need to be an expert in at least one of the major cloud platforms, AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud. You need to understand a wide range of cloud services and how they all fit together. A lot of the architects will have certifications like the AWS Solutions Architect or Azure Solutions Architect Expert to prove that they have this knowledge. But I would say that previous work experience is probably more important. But technical skills aren't the only thing that matters for a solutions architect. In fact, I'd argue that the soft skills are even more important. You need to be an excellent communicator, both verbally and in writing. You need to be able to take complex technical concepts and explain them in a way that non-technical stakeholders can understand. You need to be able to lead and coordinate a team. And you need to have a strong business mindset so you can make sure that your technical solutions are actually contributing to the company's goals. And when I think about the solutions architects that I've worked with, they've all been really good at adapting their communication styles. For example, with engineers, they can go in depth on some technical concepts, but with finance or business teams, they simplify things a lot more and still manage to get their point across. The key facts for the solutions architects role. According to Glassdoor, the average salary in the US is around $200,000. Can you get in as a junior? Now, this is often considered a more senior role and something that people transition to after they have some previous experience. That being said, it's not impossible to get in as a junior. And some people have found companies willing to train them up. The demand for this role is high. I'm sure you've heard already. Lots of companies are going through this period of digital transformation and they need cloud solutions architects to do this. The next role is the cloud engineer. I actually work as a cloud engineer for a large bank. And I think of the role like a city planner who designs and builds cities. They create the roads, the buildings and the bridges and make sure that everything sort of connects together. And just like a city planner needs to make sure that their city runs smoothly, the cloud engineer needs to make sure that the company's cloud city is always running by fixing any problems that comes up. But every company does cloud a little differently. So even though the core responsibilities are the same across multiple companies, the day to day can actually vary quite a lot. Some some places might call you a DevOps engineer. Others might say you're in infrastructure. Basically, there's no standard definition of a cloud engineer. For me, I spend a lot of my time working on creating things in the cloud using a tool called Terraform. It's basically a way for us to create standardized blueprints for the stuff that we deploy in the cloud. So if a development team needs a new environment spun up, we've got some Terraform code for that. Need a database cluster? We've got some Terraform for that too. It makes things repeatable and consistent. But it's not just about building stuff. A big part of the job is keeping things running and fixing issues when they pop up. A lot of the time, I'll be working with other development teams, helping them troubleshoot or deploy new services. It's a lot of collaboration. So what does it take to be a cloud engineer? Well, the technical skills are obviously important. Tools like Terraform and Docker are pretty much mandatory these days. As well as being able to code 
in at least one language. Python is probably the most common. I think in general, you need to know your way around the major cloud platforms. So you need to have solid networking and operating system knowledge and be comfortable with programming. Just like a solutions architect, the soft skills are also very important. You've got to be a problem solver. When something breaks in the cloud, it's on you to figure out. You also need to be able to communicate clearly both with your own team and with the other teams around you. And most importantly, you have to be always learning because the technology and the cloud services are always changing. Now, certifications can help too, but they're not always required. The architect level certifications like the AWS Solutions Architects or the Azure Solutions Architects Expert are good because at the end of the day, knowing architecture is the foundation of cloud engineering. The key facts of the cloud engineering role, according to Glassdoor, the average salary in the US is around 150,000 US dollars. Can you get in as a junior? Yes. I think it's actually slightly easier to get an entry level cloud engineer job compared to a solutions architect. For example, some companies and consultancies offer training programs for fresh graduates. Demand is pretty high. There's not much more to say to that. Demand is high, especially at a senior level, but more and more companies are also starting to recognize the importance of training junior talent. The next role is the cloud security engineer or cloud security analyst. Now, I like to think of the cloud security engineer as kind of like a bodyguard for cloud resources. They're the protector of all of the data and the applications that are hosted in the cloud. And this is a very important job. I mean, think about all of the sensitive data that companies have in the cloud these days. Customer information, health records, financial records. So what does a typical day of a cloud security engineer look like? Here's a hypothetical example. In the morning, they could be reviewing security logs and alerts from the previous night. They'll attend their daily standup with the security team to discuss any ongoing going projects. They'll update security policies and access controls based on changing business requirements. In the early afternoon, they will conduct a security assessment on a new cloud application that's about to be deployed. They'll perform a routine vulnerability scan on the existing cloud infrastructure and develop an automation script using Python to streamline a particular process. At the end of their day, they'll finish up writing some documentation and then they'll read some research on the latest cloud security news. What skills do you need? It takes a lot of different skills to be good at this job. Obviously, you need to be technical. Similar to the other roles, you need expertise in a particular cloud platform. It would be even better if you also had a relevant security certification related to that platform. For example, the AWS Certified Security Specialty or the Azure Security Engineer Associate. And a big part of the job is going to be automating security processes. So having programming skills is pretty important, especially in languages like Python, PowerShell, and Bash. But it's not all just technical skills. You also need to have a solid understanding of compliance and regulations. Things like GDPR, HIPAA, and you need to be able to communicate these complex topics to non-technical stakeholders. The key facts of the cloud security engineer role. The average salary, again, according to Glassdoor, is around 175,000 US dollars. Can you get in as a junior? This is a very competitive role. Usually the applicants have experience in related roles such as working as a securities operations center analyst or other IT support roles. But you can improve your chances a lot by having certifications and other practical experience. The demand is very high. Again, similar to most other cloud roles, security is a key part of every company's cloud strategy. The next role is the cloud support engineer. Think of a cloud support engineer kind of like a tour guide. They help you with various services within a cloud platform and act as a point of contact for any questions that you might have. They're really the bridge between the customer and the cloud service provider. Cloud support engineers often work directly for the cloud provider themselves, like Amazon, Microsoft, or Google. For example, suppose you were working for a large company and you're wondering why your application hosted on AWS is down. Did you configure something incorrectly or is there an issue with the cloud platform itself? This is when you would contact a cloud support engineer from AWS to help. So what exactly does a cloud support engineer do? Well, they're the people you call when you have issues with your cloud services. Maybe an application is running slow or a database is crashing. That's when the support engineer puts on their detective hat and starts looking into the problem. They'll get on a call with the customer, ask a bunch of questions, and then go into their cloud environment to see what's going on. It's like they're solving a puzzle, piecing together clues until they find the root cause. But they don't just sit around waiting for things to break. They're proactive. They're constantly monitoring various cloud environments and anticipating whether things would go wrong. For example, maybe they they'll see an application is using more resources than it should be. So they'll investigate, they'll figure out why, and then they'll come up with a plan to fix it. But the technical side of things isn't what's most important. They're not just the tech experts, but they also have to be really, really good communicators. Because they're working directly with the customers, they need to be able to explain technical concepts in a way that anyone can understand. It's like being a translator, taking a lot of technical language and turning it into plain English. This is because often the other engineers that they're dealing with aren't cloud specialists. So the language they use needs to 
suit their audience. What skills do you need? Well, I think there's two really important ones that stand out. Firstly, and maybe obviously, you must have knowledge about the specific cloud platform that you're working with. This is crucial. This includes understanding the various different services and best practices. You need to be able to troubleshoot effectively and be able to resolve issues related to these services. This includes analyzing logs and monitoring systems. A good way to show that you have this knowledge is by getting certifications for the cloud platform you're interested in. But as I said before, equally as important is the communication skills. You're dealing directly with the customers, so it's really important that you're able to work with them effectively. The key facts of the cloud support engineer role. The average salary is around $142,000. Can you get an as a junior? Yes. The cloud providers like AWS actually do offer a lot of entry-level roles for recent graduates or people transitioning into the cloud industry. These programs are obviously quite competitive, but the rewards are great. You get trained up by a major cloud provider, you gain specialist skills in their platform and work with really, really clever people. Demand? Medium, I'd say. Since the employers are mostly cloud providers, this limits the amount of positions that are available. Compare this to something like a cloud engineer or a solutions architect where you can work for any large company. The demand is slightly less here. The next role is the cloud administrator or cloud systems administrator. Being a cloud administrator is like being a systems administrator, but for the cloud. Shocking, I know. Instead of managing physical servers in a server room, you're managing virtual machines in the cloud. But a lot of the core responsibilities are the same. You're still in charge of making sure everything's running smoothly, that resources are being used efficiently, and that the security is tight. But of course, there's also cloud-specific stuff you have to deal with too. A big part of the job is deploying and managing all of these different cloud resources. So when someone in your company needs a new virtual machine or more storage space, you're the one that sets it up. And you've got to do it in a way that's efficient and follows all of the right procedures and best practices. You also have to keep an eye on costs. Maybe you notice that there's a bunch of virtual machines that no one's using anymore. So you'd have to identify those and go in and clean them up. Security is another huge part of the job. It means regularly checking for vulnerabilities and patching anything that comes up. And when something does go wrong, because let's face it, in IT things always go wrong, sometimes you're going to be the one that has to jump in and fix it. Maybe a virtual machine crashes or there's some weird network issue. It's on you to troubleshoot that and get things back up and running as soon as possible. What skills do you need? You would need the same skills pretty much as a traditional systems administrator. For example, knowledge about various operating systems, server management, patching and networking. You also need to know about identity and access management and be able to manage security policies. Have you ever built a home lab or do you really enjoy configuring your home network? Then you'd probably be very suited for this role. On top of this, you need to apply these skills to a specific cloud platform. You should be familiar with the monitoring tools for that platform and be able to troubleshoot any issues that come up. And similar to a cloud engineer, you should also be familiar with general purpose programming languages. This is so that you can write automation and configuration scripts. The key facts of the cloud administrator role. The average salary here is around $95,000. But in reality, it's probably higher as this role on Glassdoor is not focused specifically on cloud. Can you get in as a junior? Similar to the cloud security engineer, this is a very competitive role. However, there are junior positions available. If you can demonstrate that you have the knowledge and the skills necessary, and if you have the certifications to back it up too, then you have a really good chance. No surprises here, demand is high, similar to most other cloud roles. So now you know about the top cloud roles, but this is all useless unless you actually want to be a cloud engineer. And to make that choice, you need to hear about the negatives of the role too. So you can find out why you shouldn't be a cloud engineer in this video.